Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen who had no children, and this day lamented very much. But one day, as the queen was walking by the side of the river, a little fish lifted his head out of the water and said, Your wish shall be fulfilled, and you shall soon have a daughter. When the little fish had foretold, soon came to pass. And the queen had a little girl who was so beautiful that the king could not cease looking on her for joy and determined to hold a great feast. So he invited not only his relations, friends, and neighbors, but also the fairies, that they might be kind and good to his little daughter. Now there were three fairies, thirteen fairies in the kingdom, and he only had, and he had only twelve golden dishes for them to eat out, eat out of, so that he was obligated to leave one of the fairies without an invitation. The rest came, and after the feast was over, they all gave the best gifts to the little princesses. Princess. One gave her virtu virtue, another beauty, another riches, and so on till she had all that was excellent in the world. When eleven had done blessing her, the thirteenth, who had not been invited and was very angry on that account, came in and determined to take her revenge. So she cried out, The king's daughter shall in her fifteenth year be wounded by a spindle and fall down dead. Then the twelfth, who had not yet given her gift, came forward and said that the bad wish must not be fulfilled and that she could soften it and that the king's daughter should not die but fall asleep for a hundred years. But the king hoped to save his dear child from the threatened evil, and he ordered that all the spindles in the kingdom should be brought up and destroyed. All the fairies' gifts were in the meantime fulfilled, for the princess was so beautiful, well-behaved, and animal amiable and wise that everyone who knew her loved her now it happened that on the very day she was 15 years old the king and the queen were not at home and so she was left alone in the palace so she roamed about by herself and looked at all the rooms and chambers till at last she came to an old tower to which there was a narrow staircase ending with a little door when she turned it, the door sprang open, and there was no lady sitting away very bustily. Why, how now, good mother, said the princess. What are you doing here? What are you doing there? Spinning, said the old lady, and nodded her head. How prettily the little thing turns round. How prettily the little thing turns round, said the princess. And took the spindle and began to spin. But scarcely had she touched it before the pro prophecy was fulfilled and she fell down lifeless on the ground. However, she was not dead but had only fallen into a deep sleep. And the king and queen who just, that came, who just then came home and all their court fell asleep too, and the horses slept in the stables, and the dogs in the yard, and the pigeons on the housetop, and the flies on the walls, even the fire on I hearth left off blazing, and went to sleep, and the meat that was roasting stood still, and the cook who was at the moment pulling the kitchen boy by the hair to give him a box on the ear for something he had done amiss let him go and both fell asleep and so everything stood still and slept soundly a high hedge of thorns soon grew around the palace and every year became higher and thicker till at last the whole place was summoned and hidden so that not even the roof or chimneys could be seen but there went a report through all the land of the beautiful sleeping briar rose for thus was the king's daughter called so that from time to time several king's sons came and tried to break through the thicket of, into the palace this they could never do for the thorns and bushes laid hold of them as it were with hands and they were stuck fast and died badly. and for many many years there came another king's son into the land and an old man that told him a story of the thicket of thorns and how a beautiful palace stood behind it and which was a wonder wondrous princess called briar rose asleep was all her court he told too how he had heard from his grandfather that many many princesses had come and had tried to break through the thicket but had stuck fast and died then the young prince said, 
All this shall not frighten me. I will go and see Briar Rose. The old man tried to dis dissuade him, but he persisted in going. Now that the very day the hundred years were completed, the prince and as the prince came to the thicket, he saw nothing but beautiful flowering shrubs through which he had passed with ease, and they closed after him as firm as ever. Then he came to the last. Then, then he came at last to the palace, and there in the yard lay the dogs to sleep, and the horses in the stables and on the roof sat the pigeons fast asleep with their heads under their wings. And when he came into the palace, the flies slept on the walls, and the cook in the kitchen was still holding up her hand as if she would beat the boy, and the maid sat with a black fowl in her hands ready to be plucked. Then he went on still further, and all was so still that he could hear every breath drew, every breath he drew, till at last he came to the old tower and opened the door of the little room in which Briar Rose was, and there she lay fast asleep, and looked so beautiful that he could not take his eyes off her. He stooped down and gave her a kiss, but the moment he kissed her, she opened her eyes and awoke, and smiled upon him. Then they went... Then they went out together, and presently the king and queen also awoke, and all the court, and they gazed on each other with great wonder, and the horses got up and shook themselves, and the dogs jumped about and barked, the pigeons took their heads from under their wings, and looked about and flew into the field. The flies on the walls buzzed away, the fire in the kitchen blazed up and cooked the dinner, and the rose meat turned round again. The cook gave the boy the box on his ear, so that he cried out, and the maid went on, went on plucking the fowl. And then was the wedding of the Prince and Briar Rose celebrated, and they lived happily ever after all their lives.